What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video of uh, putting this 7.3 liter Godzilla in this S550 Mustang, we pulled it out, we put a camshaft in it, we put valve springs in it, we put a center force twin disc clutch. We went ahead and welded up some fresh engine mounts with some actual bushings, got them all painted, and we set the engine back in the car. Now that this thing is officially sitting in here, there's so many systems that need to be in place to actually get this thing to work. These things never came with a 7.3 Godzilla, so fuel lines are different, the radiator's different, a couple things are very similar, which I'm excited about because some things are going to be really easy, but some things are also going to be complicated. We are working with Holly on this project and we are putting in a Terminator X ECU. We have a fresh 7.3 Godzilla harness that they just came out, so it's full plug and play for this specific engine. That is going to be here tomorrow, but in the meantime we have a ton of stuff to go ahead and button up and we're just going to get to work. So we're going to bring you guys along with us, show you how everything works together. Hopefully. Good. So one of the simpler parts of this whole entire project is since we are using the factory five liter transmission, which is an MT82, which are not known to hold the most amount of power, the cross member literally just bolts right up. Now it's really done. So now that the cross member. That sounds nice. That's the that's the bell that means it's done. So the next thing that I'm looking at, I'm just considering. Obviously, there's stages of a project of like, okay, when do I do the exhaust? Do I have all the stuff to do the exhaust? So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just making sure that I have everything to finish the exhaust. We're not gonna do it right now. But rough uh, idea, two and a quarter inch right here coming out of the header. We already have a V-band welded on up there. Then a three inch coming back right here, 45 right there at the bottom. And again, this is just super rough. And then pretty much all we need to do is add a little straight section right there. And this is actually going to a off the shelf Coyote exhaust. So this is actually, I believe the Flowmaster um, something. It's, it's basically what we had on here before with the 2J but instead of it being a single exit for the EcoBoost, because we had an EcoBoost exhaust, because we obviously had a single turbo, now it is dual three inch all the way out of the back with this little, uh, little X-pipe uh, right there. We're gonna go ahead and remove the exhaust now that I know that I have this stuff to finish it. Stick in the shifter with the shift linkage and then the drive shaft. I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, MotionAutoPerformance.com, where every $1 you spend on performance parts for your car, actually get you some entries to win this 07 STI. Speaking of performance parts, Eric just spent the last hour installing some fresh BC Racing coilovers on this Subaru STI. When we got this car, it actually had these TN coilovers on it. So these are not a bad coilover, and I've had them on some previous cars in the past, but the previous owner actually made a big mistake installing these. So they wanted to lower down the car. Let's see that. They actually lowered the car by taking the preload out of the spring and essentially the car was riding around on bump stops. So we go all the way down. There's barely any travel on that at all. Like we are super close to the bump stop. So the proper way to actually lower the car, you could see there's plenty of threads in here. So you would loosen that bottom nut right there, thread the coilover body down into it and maintain that preload. So you want just a little bit of preload. Normally I use like about a coilover wrench worth just to give it a little bit about where the spring will still spin a little bit. That's how the BCs come from the factory. So we thought that these coilovers were completely blown. And um, obviously we are a dealer for BC racing coilovers on motionalperformance.com. It's crazy to think a set of coilovers could actually get you to win that car. Garrett Turbo, Deech Works Injectors, and over 200,000 other parts. Also anything purchased on motionalotv.com gets you 10 entries for a chance to win the car. And we were doing tools in random orders for this week. So shout out to today's video sponsor. Be sure to click the link in the description. And uh, we got some work to do on this Mustang. So let's get to it. So the next thing is this factory shifter, which I'm stoked about because when we did the 2J in here, we had to use a Nissan CD09 transmission, basically a stock 350Z or 370Z transmission. But the cool thing about this is it literally is gonna go in the factory hole with the factory shift boot, with the factory stuff, with the factory bolts on everything. It's just gonna work like it was meant to be there. Uh, I need to lower down the transmission though 
uh, in order to you know put in the bushing and the bolt and, and the stuff. So I'm gonna do that, and then this will be hopefully complete. Do you think Eric's getting paid by the hour based upon how it works? Yeah, what? How could you tell if somebody's getting paid by, by the hour or by the job? I'm the buffer. He's polishing dirt nibs out of the paint. But instead of using the electric tool, he's using the speaker. He's polishing it. He's the buffer. Wow. And, and that's how you know he's getting paid by the hour. <laughs> You guys haven't met Eric yet. We uh, actually, I don't even think he's officially hired. I think we just started paying him, and he just came back. He just keeps coming back all the time. Uh, and I, he keeps coming back, and I keep paying him. So anyhow, we have been uploading a lot of stuff on the vlog channel, the Trevor Jameson vlog channel. A little bit more long form versions. I know a lot of you guys really liked the format of this last episode, basically part two of this whole build series, and I really like that too. And that's where Motion Auto, I think, is going. And we're gonna keep a little bit more of the raw vlog type stuff on the vlog channel, Trevor Jameson. So we'll put that link in the description if you guys want to see some more stuff right here. Me talking crap to Eric, me fighting Charles in the background. We got and, some interesting stuff on the lift back there. Yeah, we got we got some stuff. I've been we're I've been doing some things, but that's that's what the other channel's for. This is what this is this is what we're doing. Next cool thing is the factory drive shaft just goes in. And when we did this whole swap initially, that's one of the things we did. We put in the factory cross member, we put in the factory drive shaft for all this stuff, and then we made the engine mount. So now that you know everything is back in there, now it actually works. So shaft me. Maybe go down in the middle and back up. Not bad, huh? Look at that. We got in the shaft and it's this is the good one. Drive shaft is hooked up, shifting linkage, shifter linkage is hooked up as well. The engine's pretty much in there and it's not going anywhere. Now we need to kind of start planning out the plumbing of some stuff. As you can see, this factory Godzilla intake manifold, it's for a truck. You know, they sit down in the truck. So like top of the radiator is like right here, the engine kind of sits in there. So they have the throttle body go up and over to a uh, an air filter, like an air box. And so that is why that throttle body is, you know, the flange is twisted right there. We made this thing about a year ago when there wasn't as much development. And we actually have a surprise in a box right over here. Wow. This right here is a low profile poly intake manifold. <whistles> Pretty sick, right? You gotta take that thing out of the bag and look at it, buddy. We got, we'll, we'll take it out of the bag. The interesting thing too about the Godzilla is, is you can see there's no injector holes in the intake manifold. So the injectors are actually in the cylinder heads. So you can remove the intake manifold without having to do the injectors, I think. Technically, intake manifold swaps are, uh, are a thing, but yeah, now that should give us plenty of clearance to kind of get around, you know, in here. Technically, this already did clear the hood on the S550. Now, we don't have to deal with this, even though I think that that kind of like, that makes the engine look super big. I feel like just putting that on there is just gonna make it look a lot smaller and cooler as well. Get this thing off of here, and then we'll kind of set that on there and then we're gonna start messing with the wiring harness as well. interesting thing about this intake manifold is it actually runs the coolant through here. Typically, this goes down underneath the intake manifold right there. So now they just basically made a little port. So coolant just goes right here. 
so we'll be able to run this straight out to the radiator. Something kind of similar with this uh, coolant hose right here. So this is for the heater core. There's a little spot right there, and I believe Holly actually makes one of these to convert it to an AN line, or basically like a little 90 degree fitting. You have to either use that, maybe cut and weld something on here, but they do provide in the kit a block off plate for that, as well as a block off for this, uh, this upper thing on the, the water pump. So we could basically delete them, block them off for now, and then when we decide we wanna run uh, you know, heater core or whatever, we could run that straight to that as well. Uh, I do plan on running a heater core in here, so we'll probably go ahead and order that fitting. But I'm glad we're kinda like trying to lay out everything with this thing today. That way if we need any additional parts, we can get them ordered and, um, and get them coming right away. Next thing we need to kinda start doing is the fuel system, get the layout for that. And then we have the wiring harness that showed up, which is the exact plug and play harness for the 7.3 Godzilla that plugs straight into the Holly Terminator X. Uh, so we're gonna start laying that stuff out as well. We have a set of Holly fuel rails. Uh, the box says LS fuel rails, but on the side of the box, it says billet Godzilla fuel rails because they, they probably just already had a bunch of like LS fuel rails. And if you really look at the dynamics of this engine, it's like, it's pretty much an LS, but an LS is pretty much an old pushrod modular motor. OE style Godzilla intakes, obviously with this fuel rail, um, it's gonna fit no matter what, just cause it bolts onto the cylinder heads. Those are, those are nice looking rails. Gloss black, dude. Gloss black billet fuel rails. And then to top it all off, we are adding in a set of Dietchworks 1200 CC injectors. So these are the big dogs. These are ones are gonna make some, uh, some good power in the future. So we're trying to plan for the future stages of this build. So we have eight 1200cc injectors, which should be probably plenty for a while is, is what I'm gonna say. And then we also have a Dietchworks fuel pressure regulator. So we've already upgraded this fuel system previously when we ran the 2J. Uh, Dietchworks made a billet fuel hanger where I have two or three Dietchworks 300 fuel pumps in the tank, eight and feed and six and return. So we're basically gonna use all of those lines and go up to this regulator, basically in the same exact spot that I had it with the 2J, which is literally right here. So fuel pressure regulator right there, and then we'll run the you know the fuel lines up to the, the engine, and that should be it. So we're gonna get the injectors sitting in there, make sure we can go on and off with the intake manifold. Um, if we can't, we're gonna go ahead and finalize some stuff with the intake manifold, so that way we could just kind of start buttoning this thing up, uh, so that way we can move on to the wiring harness had a pretty good relationship with Dietchworks over the past couple years and before they sent it out they just did a quick laser etch of the Motion Auto logo. That's so sick. On the front so that's uh that's really cool. That's a nice little and, and and it's on the back too so that way you can you can decide which way you want it. So we'll probably right there front and center little bracket bolts right here on the side to where you could go like here 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 you could mount it there you could bend the bracket you could cut it you could weld it you could do whatever you need so it's kind of a pretty good solution to uh, mounting the fuel pressure regulator. We also sell Dietchworks products on motionautoperformance.com. If you guys are needing any Dietchworks stuff, if you need anything you don't see on the website, you can shoot us an email. Uh, we could get a lot of stuff, but uh, if you guys want to get some parts, help support us, help support the companies that support us, motionautoperformance.com, link in the description. So that only took an hour. I thought, you know, five minute job. You know, that's, that's the way it goes. But yeah, now we will have a uh, heater core. We'll pull this thing off. This is the cap that Holly gives you, which actually, I mean, that looks pretty pretty decent for what it is, because I don't think there's much you can do with that other than like cutting it and putting a cap on it. But we want to try and run a heater core with this thing because we plan on driving it in somewhere very cold here very soon. And uh, so that's kind of the goal. So 
with this we should have a uh, nice heater core so that means now pull the intake manifold off go ahead and button up some of the stuff underneath the intake manifold and then we could actually put the gaskets in it officially bolt it down and then that means we could you know officially run the wiring harness and do fuel lines and just continue along with the process of getting this thing ready to start You know what that's the sound of? A throttle body that doesn't work with my finger stuck in it on an intake manifold that's officially bolted on a 7.3 Godzilla and a 2015 S550 Mustang. Intake manifold is officially on this thing. Fuel rails, all that stuff looks nice. Cool how the intake manifold, how you run the coolant. And then my fancy little thing that I made just works perfect for the coolant um, or, you know, the heater core. So now we have a pretty exciting piece of the build. Obviously, it's not going to be easy to, to get this all to work in here, but it is going to be this wiring harness right here. So this is direct from Holly, and this is a straight plug and play into the Terminator X. And it is a plug and play for the Godzilla engine. So. Uh, the last harness was off of a 5.0 Coyote and a lot of stuff was similar but a lot of stuff wasn't. It has a couple extra things that are specific to the Godzilla like the VVT in the right spot, there's an oil pressure uh, sensor, there's a coolant temp sensor, the knock sensors are in you know the right spots. It's definitely nice to have it you know exactly what it is and they pretty much just came out with this and I don't even know if this is open or if these are available to the public yet. But I have a relationship with Holly and we've been working together on this build and like the Corvette in the past. This is obviously going on the engine somewhere in here. All of this has to go inside somewhere. So one thing about a lot of Fords is actually the ECUs are in the engine bay. So the normal wiring harness for the EcoBoost, which was powered off of this ECU, is just right here. This, this Holly ECU, actually is gonna be inside of um, the cabin you know the 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 cockpit inside of the cockpit so the holly needs to go inside the car and so we need to figure out a either hole or a, a proper way to route it where it could actually be accessible we could like wire things to it and that's uh that's what we're gonna start on so i'm gonna go ahead and pull out the fender well you can see we have a little little rubbish from drift in before but pull out the fender well and then we'll see how we could get this holly harness to actually run inside of the actual uh cabin of the car so I pulled the inside kick panel down here right there we should be able to go through that hopefully there's a little bit of extra room and then we could actually uh, get the wiring harness in here Got the fuel system done on the top pretty much the only thing i need to do is run the adan feed line through a fuel filter so we got a detorch fuel filter right here we didn't have any issues with the 2j in here because we had a single exhaust because single turbo uh, so we had the exhaust on this side so i didn't have to worry about anything hot over here in this area so you can see my fuel lines already made this is the one that was in here with the 2j but then right there you can see if that's where the fuel filter goes then bam pretty much straight into the exhaust. Uh, the way that I have the fuel system is it actually kind of goes over to the passenger side through the back of the engine. There's plenty of space back there. I think I'm just gonna move this fuel filter actually back here on the fuel rail, but also we're gonna have the exhaust and the exhaust pretty much goes right here. So hot stuff, you know, again, we don't want hot stuff by by the fuel if we could uh, if we could avoid it so maybe we need to do something else simple challenges of you know going back from a 2j to a v8 so we're gonna keep working through that fuel line uh we moved the lines on the side of the frame rail basically there's two frame rails here there's like an inner and an outer and so this is above that so it's not gonna get hit with anything 
we moved the fuel lines from, they used to go around right here and go underneath that to now on this side and then they go up uh, behind the brake booster and there's actually a plate that goes behind the front wheel that's kind of like an impact thing. All right, Detroit's fuel system is done. The Holly engine harness and plugged into the ECU is done. So now that leaves the next system, which is integrate the Holly wiring into the chassis wiring and then figure out when we like push the push button start, how we get all that stuff to work and talk to each other and be happy. And I don't think it's gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be very happy, but we're gonna figure it out. in some things we went ahead and threw the spark plug wires on it i powered it up with holly basically went through had to update the firmware download the 7.3 godzilla base calibration file went in and scaled the injectors for the 1200 cc deechworks that we have installed in there it was nice to have a new technical data button on deechworks website and you go there pulls up an excel sheet copy paste done brand like injectors perfectly calibrated for it. So now we have drive-by wire is connected. It's not doing anything. There might be a power wire that I need to hook up to it. But one of the concerns that I have right now is what's gonna happen when I just push the button. Obviously this car is a 2015 Mustang and it has a proximity key. So as long as the key is in the car and you push your foot, technically, since this car was an automatic, if you push your foot on the brake and push the start button, it engages the fuel pump, the starter, all that stuff as soon as the car sees an RPM signal, it turns off the starter. The car, let's call it the body control module, does not see any sort of an RPM from this engine. It basically doesn't know it's there, but I have the starter wire hooked up to the factory relay from this car, and I have the stock EcoBoost ECU in it. So we're gonna try to figure out a way to split the signals, the crank signal later. Maybe I could put like the tachometer signal like into it or something. We'll figure that out later. But for right now, I should be able to push the button and it should crank over. And then we should see if we have fuel pressure and all that other stuff, which will be nice. Oh, it cranks. Is it gonna start? So that was the very first time we've ever tried cranking this thing with fuel hooked up obviously I don't have the injectors plugged in but we wanted to see if it even would spark uh, if it doesn't spark then it ain't gonna st you know start as soon I don't want to start flooding it with fuel it's not showing an rpm which means that we might not be getting a crank signal so we probably have a little bit more work to do but at least it cranks off of the key I figured out I was having an issue with the push to start button it's because over there in the fuse box I unplugged like the main power wire that goes to the fuse box in here so that made sense you know why, why it wasn't cranking it's obviously not getting an rpm signal for the chassis for the crank sensor, I went ahead and stuck the tachometer output signal from the the Holly in there. Like maybe it would pick up a signal and keep the fuel pumps running. We just need to mess with it a little bit more. So I guess we'll uh, I'll look at some stuff on the computer, make sure that everything is pinned right and things are plugged in correctly, and then we'll go from there. So it has been a couple days, and I've had ran into a few issues with uh, trying to get the Godzilla to start. So the next thing. In order for this thing to start, for it to give it fuel spark, I think in order for it to let the Holly do anything to even see if this thing is gonna run, it needed a TPS calibration. So we are running a drive-by wire configuration on this setup because factory is a drive-by wire. The Mustang is drive-by wire. So the pedal and everything works, everything plugged in, everything lined up. Obviously this throttle went on there just fine. So what you do is you come over here and you click this little button you get sync with ecu it says tps auto set needs to be performed drive by wired failed right there and you hit tps auto set so then what will happen so that works 
Now we go inside the car, we press the pedal down twice. So you just go all the way to the floor once, all the way to the floor twice. And then the ECU sees them voltages and it says okay. So we click done, bam, throttle body code. Calibration failed, throttle body is bad. Some of the possible causes, throttle body bad, throttle body wiring is not connected. The wrong throttle bottle body type is selected. There is a wiring issue. So I went down a rabbit hole for like two hours the other day of just trying to just pull my hair out. Looked at the pin out of the pedal, looked at the pin out of the holly, looked at the pedal, the pin out of the throttle body. Well, turns out the stock 7.3 Godzilla throttle body has only one TPS in it. A different throttle body off of a different model year, uh, basically off a of 2015 and up 6.2 truck, not a Godzilla, that has the correct pin out. So obviously my throttle body failed, which means that it does not pass the TPS auto set, which means that it will not give it fuel and spark, which means this thing has basically not been running for four or five days because of that. So anyhow, last night got a marketplace. I typed in 62 Ford bam somebody's parting out with 2015 so i got this it actually has the right part number on it if you come over here to the holly instructions i guess there's instructions for a reason also if you guys are ever messing with a ford you could get on motocraftservice.com sign up pay like 30 dollars, and you have full access to like their diagrams you could put the vin number of your car in whatever and you get exact pinouts connector faces everything helped me out a lot with my truck and it helped me figure out this issue with this throttle body and the fact that this one doesn't work. This one works. I checked basically a 2015 uh, 6.2 truck. Pinouts are different. Uh, same pinout, but on this one, only five wires are connected on a Godzilla, which is just, that's just wild. All right, so that worked. The other one worked and did the same thing. Pedal down back down back You're, we're figuring this out real time let's see done let's see if she passes this was successful that's crazy so that's the way up so i'm gonna go ahead and bolt this throttle body on now and then i guess we're gonna crank it and we're gonna see what happens so new throttle body is on and we are gonna we're gonna take a gander at this together boys oh yeah I guess when all else fails, read the instructions to AT, confirm part numbers, and then proceed, I guess, because that, that was my freaking issue. So uh, I guess we could see if she cranks now or has spark. Eric is gonna help me check spark on this thing. Ready? We got spark. Wow. So you know what else we should do? Give it just a little, just a smidge of this. Just, just a little, pss, just a tiny. Ah, yep. Okay. All right, ready, boys? I don't know if I'm ready. Okay. No spark. All right, maybe a little bit more. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this was supposed to just like. It was supposed to just work. Buddy, it just needs fuel. All I like, literally, all I need to do is hook up, plug in the injectors because we wanted to make sure she fired. So the injectors are not plugged in right now, and the fuel pump, it's not getting a signal, I believe, from the body control module, which means that it's not going to prime the fuel pump. So we need to make it so the fuel pump runs with the ECU, check fuel pressure, and freaking fire it up. Other than that, like, buddy, that was that was the first. That was it. That was the first pop and bang with us. We heard it bump once when we sprayed a little bit of starting fluid and then we figured we'd turn on the camera for y'all. So fuel pump and That's let awesome. her rip. That's exciting. Finally.
So I am so freaking stoked that this thing finally fired up. It has been a long time coming, past two days of kind of messing with this thing with like cranking it and it literally not starting. Also, it just being just kind of a simple issue of not reading the wire instructions. Like to a T, to the part number was kind of a mistake of mine and just assuming, but obviously with a little bit of research and actually finding out some stuff, who would have thought that that throttle body would have not been uh, the right thing? So. Obviously we still have some things to hook up. We need a radiator. We need an air intake with an air filter. We have to get rid of all this wiring. Obviously this is temporary things just to make it work. We have to connect the exhaust. We have to hook up the Holly dash and just a few other little things. But this thing is getting really close, but we have a lot of stuff that we actually need to do in the next week or so because we are heading out to California for the LZ World Tour round one. So we are actually taking my S14, the 2JZ drift car. Uh, we initially thought about taking this thing, but we do not have a cage. So obviously the 2JS14 is pretty dialed and should be ready to go. So we'll probably put it on the dyno and play with it this next week. So I'm super stoked to be driving that thing and hang out with everybody in California. So if you guys are in California, it's in Bakersfield or close to there. It's about an hour outside of LA. We're gonna be selling merch and everything sold at the event. We get you entries for a chance to win the 07 STI. And currently right now, as you guys are watching this video, we are doing 10 times entries and tools in random orders. So if you have not got entered for a chance to win that car, be sure to click the link in the description. We'll see you guys with an S14 dyno video here soon. See you guys later.